Michael Tyson, uh, front right here. Oh, well, after only a few days removed from another massive pay-per-view here in Australia, a country that's been starving for fights. So what are the emotions now that we're camps over and you're only a few days away? It feels good for camp to be over, for sure. Uh, I've felt like fighting for the past three weeks. But uh, it's exciting to be back on home ground, man, seeing all the fans. Uh, it's been a vibe, even at the airport. Uh, fans coming up and stuff, so... Uh, yeah, Perth's been good to me, so hopefully two for two. Personally, like you were saying, uh, the last time you fought here in Australia didn't go your way. Did you f feel any sort of unfinished business, given how that last fight ended and then the long layoff and everything? Yeah, and he's back? an asshole because then he retired, so I wanted that one back. <laughs> no, no um, obviously it's uh, uh, yeah, it was hard. There was a lot, there was a lot, um, but it was all supposed to happen for a reason. So I'm back here now, and uh, yeah, ready to get it back, ready to get it done. And obviously, Mazes is not your original opponent. He's coming mm -hmm. back into the UFC after leaving, winning a belt, and coming back. Did you know much about him? Because he debuted during your layoff and left during your layoff, so you never really yeah. crossed paths. No, I haven't at all. Um, it was uh, a nice change of pace because the last two guys I fought, I think, got cut from the UFC, so it was good to bring someone back in. Uh, but it's it's actually a better fight, I think, uh, for the fans anyway, uh, and. Um, I'm just very glad that he took it on a week's notice because I still get to get paid. Sure. <laughs> and obviously, this is your third fight in less than a year since your comeback. Have you been happy with your progression since coming back? Yeah. Uh, more work to be done. Uh, and But I just feel like I'm getting better and better. And that's testament to my training at City Kickboxing. And uh, it's been enjoyable and transformative. Uh, I feel like uh, after... The four years off, I was a bit lost in those four years. Um, even coming back, even though from the outside looking in, it looks like it's all happy and everything's going good because I'm winning in a fight. But I hadn't fully trans uh, trans transitioned back to being a fighter again and being the person that I love being. So I think uh, now I'm really starting to get into the groove, um, being back like comfortable with who I am as a fighter, as a father, and uh, now I'm just ready to get after it. So given that, on, after the fight's over, what does the headline say about your fight when it's done? Next. <laughs> and then final question for me. Uh, your division obviously has a new champion, Jamal Hill. What do you make of his victory, Glover's retirement, and what the future yeah. holds? Uh, man, I, like, I love Glover, man. Like, it's uh, cool to look up to someone at that, uh, that age and still beating up the youngsters. So uh, as... Um, Obviously sad to see him going out, but uh, Jamal, he's a very sneaky striker. Uh, the way he sets up stuff, uh, very interesting. Um, but yeah, that's uh, further down the road for me. I've got plenty of hard fights before that comes up, but it'll be soon. Thank you. Since I come back to first round finishes, is there kind of pressure to keep that streak going, or is it just something that's kind of materialized on its own yeah. when you're out there? No, it just happens. Like, I'm always ready for the three rounds, but it's just uh, if it's there, it's there. So I don't want to stay in there longer than I have to. Right. And you've only been to the decision once in your career, and it was a loss. Uh, does any part of you be like, you know, what would it be like to go all three rounds and you'll win and something like that? Like, how, how a fight would unfold in that fashion? Yeah, I'm happy for it to go the three rounds, but like, <laughs> I'd rather not go to decision. There's been a couple sketchy decisions, so <laughs> I'd rather it not be that way. So I'm just, yeah. So it's always fun, funner finishing off a go wait. It's always funner <laughs> ending the fight early. <laughs> Good catch. Stop yourself. Thank you. How you going, Dyson? Yes, sir. Um, after having such a significant layoff, when having those kind of conversations with your family about coming back after knowing what you put on the line each time you fight, how do those kind of conversations go with your family? I'm very lucky that the people very close to me don't care, care whether I get knocked out cold or win. They just know that I'm doing what I love. And uh, no matter how I went out in the octagon, at least I'm doing what I love and I'd be happy to go out that way. Um, you've got another teammate coming back from a bit of a time off, and Shane Young. Can you yeah. give him any kind of words of advice and yeah. um, anything we're, like that? Yeah, we've spoken a couple times about it. Um, I'm just like, brother, you've been off. Like, go get your money. <laughs> I know how it is. When you're not fighting, you're not getting paid. So I was like, make sure you go in there and make a statement. Uh, but he's been training hard. It was a very hard camp down at City Kickboxing. So I'm excited to see how he comes out. 
it's uh, there's there's definite pressure. You don't know what kind of fighter is going to turn up. You don't know who you are. Like after that long, uh, are you going to show up and put on a show? Are you going to be rusty? So um, it's good to get that first one out and get those questions answered. And with other teammates from CKB who are having success in the same weight class as you, mm. do those kind of thoughts and conversations ever come up that once you guys both reach the top 15 perhaps that your paths start crossing and what that would mean? We've got to get to the top 15 first, brother. <laughs> Fair enough, thank you. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, you've said you've been reading... Yeah, yep. You said you've been reading like psychology books and you've been working with a mindset coach like Adesanya's, I think. Mm. What sort of stuff have you gleaned from that in this camp? Uh, like, obviously, there's a lot of visualisation. So I've already done the walkout a thousand times. I've already seen how the, like, how the fight goes. And uh, uh, it's, yeah, it's like, it's just more comfortable. Like, no, like, you can't be worried about it because you're just happy with however it goes. Like, it's, we're good. So, like, um, you said you you're feeling fried like after your last camp mm. Is, yeah do you feel a lot better this time like like yeah. you said you're getting yeah. into the swing of things yeah and it was um like obviously I had a passing of a, my grandfather uh, in the last camp so I didn't even have time to deal with it. I flew home for the funeral went straight back into fight at camp and I didn't have that time to deal with it so now I did I got to grieve and see my family be there for them and now I just got to concentrate. I'd like a perfect camp, man. This one, so uh, it's always good when that uh, when camp goes to plan. So it's uh, like uh, obviously the outside pressure has gone. It's yeah easier to concentrate on the goal. Uh, Tyson, uh, your father John Pedro is a uh, a legend in Australian MMA. Uh, a legend, <laughs> <laughs> uh, instrumental in the growth of the sport. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about his relationship? Uh, with you throughout your career and uh, especially now? Yeah, uh, obviously instrumental, yeah, for, for sure. Uh, he's taught me a lot of lessons, um, maybe some not on purpose, but he's, uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be here without him, but uh, it's cool now that the tables are sort of turned because uh, I've been able to start training him. Like this camp, he's been getting his, I've been busting his ass. <laughs> He's been, uh, I've been making him get up in the morning and train with my strength and conditioning coach and it was his birthday and he was like, fuck, that cake wasn't worth it. <laughs> uh, can, he, can he still spar? Yes, he can. Uh, you don't want to spar him. He's the worst sparring partner. It's like, <laughs> you're going to get hurt. So 150 kilos moving at you fast. So it's like getting hit by a train. <laughs> Thank you. Tyson, up the back. Yes, sir. Just uh, your thoughts on the main event, please. Uh, I'm scared. I, I like. I hate watching my friends fight. So uh, I know he's capable of, of winning and doing what no one thinks he can do. But I just want him to pull off the win. But I hate watching fight. I'd rather be in there one hundred percent. So uh, I know he's ready. And with uh, Ty not fighting, will you be stepping into Shuey responsibilities with a win? Hell no. That's his. That's disgusting. <laughs> no, he can keep that run. Like, that's not our thing. That's his thing. <laughs> so keep the Shueys. Uh, even Laura, she's, she tricked me into a Shuey, but uh, like it was because it was a fresh shoe. But yeah, that's it for me, for Shueys. <laughs> Thanks, mate.